Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Today's webinar is Building VCP Through BNI Connect, and what we're going to talk about today is mostly filling out your profile, how to fill out your profile, some strategies for filling out your profile, what all the different fields mean in your profile, and also how they apply to the different places where you can be found through BNI Connect. So what you look like to other people out there on the internet, what you look like to other BNI members, and how this affects your visibility and credibility. A couple of housekeeping tips while we still have some people getting connected to the webinar. Uh, this webinar is a live webinar, so that means that if you do have any questions as we're going through the material today, please feel free to ask. Uh, there's a little questions control panel where you can type your questions in as we're going along. I'll see them pop up on my screen, and I'll be able to answer those as we're going through. The webinar is scheduled for 30 minutes of content, so I do try to end right at the bottom of the hour uh, with um, the stuff that we're talking about so that you guys can get back to your normal everyday lives and businesses. That being said, I will always stay on the call. I open it up for questions at that time, and people are welcome to ask any questions at all about BNI Connect, whether it has to do with today's topic or anything about BNI Connect. I'd be happy to answer uh, those questions at that time. The webinar is also being recorded. Uh, we make all of our recordings available in a couple of different places. Uh, the first place that we make it available is on our YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global, you will see all of our webinars as well as um, other educational moments, very short three to five minute videos, uh, some messages from Dr. Meisner himself, uh, various other pieces of content all up here. At youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. So have a look up there. You can also go to support.bniconnect.com. You can also get there by clicking on the question mark here in the upper right hand corner of BNI Connect. That will take you over to our support site. And here you'll see our list of upcoming webinars, but you'll also see a number of uh, forums here. In the Chapter Training and Documentation Forum, you'll see recorded webinars, and here you'll see them broken out month by month. So you can see, for example, for January 2014, in chronological order, all of the different webinars that we did that you can review there. So again, you can find them at youtube.com and also at support.bniconnect.com. All right, so today, today what we're going to talk about is... Um, building VCP with BNI Connect, and for those of you that don't know what VCP is, uh, VCP stands for Visibility plus Credibility equals Profitability. Visibility plus Credibility equals Profitability, and BNI, can, BNI Connect can help you to build visibility and credibility, and it can do so on a worldwide scale. One of the great things about BNI Connect is that your profile is accessible not just to the other members of BNI Connect, but essentially to the whole world. Now, one of the ways that they're accessible is through the regional websites. So, for example, let's say that I go to one of the regional websites. This is our, our test site up in Antarctica. But let's say that I'm looking for some services up in Antarctica. And I go to find a member, and maybe I'm going to find the person's name. So I'm looking for my good friend A-A-A-A-B-B-B-B, and he's up in Antarctica. Now, if I go and I click on his profile, a lot of people, if you haven't filled out your profile yet in BNI Connect, this is what you would see. You'd see your name, your company name, maybe a phone number if that was input or if that's being shared. It has the name of the chapter that you're in. There's really not much else there, though. So if somebody was going and, let's say, looking for a massage therapist or looking for a real estate agent or looking for a photographer, and they come across one of these profiles, not really building any credibility, probably are not going to make that next step to make the phone call to contact this person to then either use their services or be able to pass a referral to them. Now. Once you start filling out your profile, though, now I'm a member. I'm here in the Rhode Island region on the east coast of the United States. So if I go to my regional website 
And let's say that I go here, go to find a member. Let's say I'm looking for somebody that does computer support. I see the list of people in our region with that category. I find myself. And this is a little bit more of a complete profile. So you can see here it has all of my different contact information, all the different phone numbers to get in touch with me. It has a link to my website. It has the address of my business, all of the different social networking links. So you can jump right onto my Facebook page or my Twitter account, my Pinterest page, blogs, YouTube channel has my company logo, has a description about my business, has what's called my TOPS profile, my ideal referral, top product, favorite B&I story. All of this helps to build credibility when people are finding you out there on the internet. And again, this is a public website, the B&I RI site. There's also a B&I America site, which is a national website. So all of the members in the United States are all accessible through this site. So let's say I'm on the BNI America site. I go to find a member. And I, let's say, do another search. And let's say I do computer support and I look for somebody in Rhode Island. I should come up with roughly the same list of people. And I do. And here's a couple of people here. And again, it's the same profile. So it has all of my contact information and credibility building profile. This is also true on the inside of BNI Connect. So if I go and I click on BNI Connect, I go to log in to the members only section. Now the way to find other people around the world in BNI Connect is to use this magnifying glass here in the upper right hand corner. This is the members only BNI directory. So you do have to be a BNI member to be able to use this one. And I can perform the same type of search. I can also use an advanced search here. So if I was looking for keywords of computer support, I can also do a state down here if I wanted to. I can search, come up with the matches, and click on the profiles. And again, the simple search works as well. Now to BNI members, you have a little bit deeper of a profile. So that still has the My Business description. You can also see the various keywords that are listed here. Again, the phone numbers and the contact. Now there's some additional pieces of information as well that you get by being a BNI member. So you have access to their 60 second presentations to their gains profile. So you could do a gains exchange with somebody before having a one-to-one -one with them. There's also the TOPS profile. This is the same one that shows up on the public websites. You can also view other people's connections, just like you do in LinkedIn. We could take a look through and see who this person is connected with, and then click through to view their profiles as well. You can also see people's testimonials or their recommendations. There's a photo sharing library as well. You can see what groups they're participating in. And finally, you can see their training history. So all of this information is available to other BNI members. And again, it's all centered around getting visibility and building credibility. For the first time in the history of BNI, we have the ability to connect with and do business with 160,000 other BNI members around the world. So now if you have one of those profiles that doesn't have anything on it, if you would like to update that information, it's pretty easy to do. So the first thing you do is click on this My Account button in the upper right hand corner. Now this button should pretty much always be accessible, whether you're on the home screen or whether you're on one of the reports screens. Just click on this My Account button up here. This will take you into all of the settings for your account, basically your profile in BNI Connect. Now you'll notice that it's broken into a number of different tabs here. There's the main profile tab, the user profile tab, the contact details tab, the account settings tab, your bio. If you're a director consultant, there's a separate profile for your director profile as well. 
and your training history. So we're going to go through these different tabs to look at the different pieces of information that you can input. So this first tab here is the main profile, and it's some pretty basic information here. It has your name, your company name, you know, title if you choose to put your title in and your suffix. Uh, depending on your region, you may need to request a change or you'll be able to directly edit it. Now the first thing here that you might see is the VAT reference number. For those of you that are in the United States, you can safely ignore this field. Uh, VAT stands for Value Added Tax. In some other countries around the world, it is required that uh, businesses put their VAT reference number into their profile. Um, here in the United States, you can safely ignore that field. Now the industry and classification, these were taken from your application when you applied to become a member of your chapter. If those are incorrect for whatever reason, please talk to your regional office so your executive director, your director consultant, or your regional admin, and they will be able to go ahead and change that for you if appropriate. The first couple of places where we're going to spend a little bit more time updating the profile is in your My Business description and your keywords. Now the My Business description, again, this one is, is available and will be seen both to other members and to anybody that is finding you on the general internet through the regional and the country-based websites. The way that I look at the My Business description is that it is a, a kind of a, an elevator pitch, if you will. So think of when you have your weekly meeting, your weekly B&I meeting, and a visitor comes to visit your chapter. And you need to explain to them you know, what you do in the matter of a couple of sentences. It's the same thing on the website. What you want to do is describe your business succinctly, but specifically. Keep in mind that most people aren't going to read paragraphs and paragraphs of text. So I would say to keep this to probably a couple of sentences, um, maybe three, four sentences at the most. For those of you that might be in the real estate profession or a mortgage broker, um, this is also the place where you might want to put your uh, any ID numbers that you have. Uh, some contractors choose to put their license numbers in here. Um, so that would be the first line that I would put in here if that's something that is recommended by your particular industry. The second field on here where you want to spend a little bit of time as well is on your keywords. Now the keywords are really, really important because this is how people find you when they don't know your name. So it's easy for me to go to this magnifying glass and search for somebody by name if I happen to know their name. However, if I'm just specifically looking for, you know, again, a massage therapist or I'm looking for mortgages or I'm looking for um, a handyman, I'm going to look basically by a keyword and maybe the state that they're in. So when inputting your keywords, you want to keep that in mind. Now it is going to search, of course, by your industry. It will also search by your classification. But you want to put some other words in here because this is only a couple of words for the industry and classification. So you want to be a little bit more descriptive when it comes to the keywords. Now one strategy I use with my keywords is you can see here that I put MA and CT in there. Now one of the reasons that I do that is because here in Rhode Island, Rhode Island is a really, really small state. Um, it's only 20 miles wide by about 40 miles long, which is about the size of some large cities. So most people here in Rhode Island also do business in the neighboring states, so Connecticut and Massachusetts. So to make sure that I'm found for my keywords, in Rhode Island as well as Connecticut and Massachusetts, I want to make sure that I put those in my keywords and that way I'll come up in those searches as well. And that works for big states as well, so places like Texas, places like California, Arizona, where you may want to actually limit it to or come up in a search for just certain counties. So you know, maybe only the Phoenix area and some of those surrounding areas. You might want to put the names of various you know, counties or cities that people might be searching for your services in. 
So make sure you take some time, fill out your My Business and your keywords. Now, anytime you make changes on any of these pages, do make sure to click the Update button. Once you click the Update button, you'll see Saved Flash at the bottom of the screen. And then you'll know that those changes are made. And by the way, those changes are immediate. So if I was to go in and, let's say, update my, my business description, and then click Update, and I go back to my member details. If I refresh this page here, this change happens immediately. So you don't have to wait for somebody to publish the website or anything like that. You don't have to get this information to anybody else. All you need to do is update it and save it, and it will be updated for the very next time somebody views that screen. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that back to the way it was and update and save it. And now we should be back to normal on here, and we are. All right, so let's take a look at the second tab. Now the second tab is really your user profile. So if you'd like to change your username, you can click on the Change Username button and choose a new username. You know, some people may use their email address as their username, and then they go in and they change companies, or they switch from Gmail to Hotmail or Yahoo, so they'd like to go in and change their username to match that. You can go ahead and click the Change Username button. And the same thing with your password. You can set your password to whatever you'd like it to be using those buttons. The next two things here are the memorable question and answer for your profile. Where these come in is if you happen to forget your password and you're stuck at the login screen. So let's say I go to the login screen and I've forgotten my password. So go, when you go back to your chapters, if there is anybody struggling to log into BNI Connect, you can show them how to do this. Click on Forgot Password or Username. It'll ask you for your email address as listed in BNI Connect. And it's going to ask you to make sure that you're actually a human. And I click Find Me. And it's going to ask me my memorable question, and that is the same question that appears here. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? If I put my correct answer in, then it will allow me to change my password right there and log into the system. You can choose your language. So BNI Connect is translated into about 45-ish or so different languages around the world. Make sure that you have the correct one chosen, as well as your time zone. From here, you can also upload a profile image or a company logo. Again, these are good credibility building exercises. If I wanted to change my logo, I could click on Change Company Logo. And I can upload a new logo. So let's say I want to switch over to the white-based copy of my logo. I can do that and save it. And now that logo is on my profile. The next tab has all of your contact details. So mainly it's your address, your phone number, your email address. Now the most important thing on this page, this very first line up here, show me on BNI public websites. This box needs to be checked if you would like to be found on your regional and on the national websites. If this box is unchecked, people will not be able to find you out there in the public sites. So if I uncheck this, for example, and I'm going to go ahead and click Update, and I go back to my BNI RI website, even if I do a search directly for my name, I will not be found because I've chosen to be hidden from the websites. So if you would like to be found in the public, make sure that this has a check mark in it. And this will override all of these other settings. If this is unchecked, you won't be found at all. But you can also choose, assuming that you're visible, which of the other things you would like to show as well. So you can choose which phone numbers are viewed whether or not people can send you an email through the regional site, 
note that your email address will not be displayed on the public website, but there is a link there that allows people to send you an email. You can also choose whether or not to show your social media connections and choose which of your addresses, your physical address or your billing address, you would like to appear on the website. And as always, if you've made changes, make sure you click the Update button and you'll see the saved flash at the bottom of the screen. Now the next tab has a whole bunch of preferences um, having to do with you know, the social media portions of the system. The first set of permissions here has to do with how you view, how you are viewed by other members. So this checkbox is on the public websites. This has to do with the member to member, so to other BNI Connect members. You can choose which of those tabs you decide to share with people. So if you recall on the inside profile, on the BNI Connect profile, when I do a search for somebody, if I find somebody, you see these different tabs. The Profile tab, the Bio tab, the Connections tab, the Testimonials tab. You can choose which of these you're showing to people. Do you want to show your Bio tab to just to everybody, to just your connections, or to nobody at all? Do you want to show the connections? Do you want to show the testimonials? Do you want to show your picture gallery? Do you want to share your email address? Again, you can choose to show those to everybody, to just your connections, or to nobody at all. BNI Connect also has a, uh, a groups functionality, and it's, they're really discussion groups for talking with other members around the world on various topics of conversation. You can choose when to receive notifications when people make posts. Those can be done either immediately, so as soon as a new post is added, you would get an email notification. It could be once per day, once per week, or you can opt out altogether. And finally, you can choose whether or not you'd like to receive notification to your regular email addresses for other social media actions, such as um, when you receive an internal message, when you send an internal message, connection requests, and recommendation requests as well. The next tab is your bio tab, and this is the tab where you'll probably need to spend a little time the first time you go through. My guess is it'll probably take about 10 minutes or so. The first section is your bio. Now this is the same bio that your secretary treasurer usually hands out at your chapter meeting before your 10 minute presentation. It has your years in business, previous types of jobs, spouse, children, pets, hobbies, city of residence, years, burning desire something no one knows about you and your key to success. So all of that is pretty straightforward. Um, and again, it's the same form that we've always used as an introduction before our 10 minute presentations. The next section has your commercials. Now it may seem a little weird to type out your commercials here in BNI Connect, but there's a very good reason for doing so. One of those reason is, is that again, it is accessible and visible to other members. So when they view your profile, they can read your 60 second presentations. Now, why is that a good thing? One of the reasons is that, again, we're on a system right now with 160,000 other BNI Connect members from around the world. I can pretty much guarantee you that 159,970 of them will never be at your chapter meeting and have the opportunity to listen to one of your 60 seconds live. However, you can still share what you do and what you're looking for, what a good referral is for you, anytime you'd like to through your profile. Another good reason for this is I'm sure this has never happened to you, but you realize at the last minute that you can't make it to, a, to your chapter meeting the next day. You manage to contact somebody and, and get them to substitute for you at the last minute, but you don't really have time to write up a 60-second presentation. If you have a couple prepared here in BNI Connect, you could always log in, 
copy and paste it and shoot it off in an email real quick and they can use that for your 60 second presentation when they're substituting. The next section is the GAINS profile. Of course, GAINS stands for Goals, Accomplishments, Interests, Networks, and Skills. A good reason for doing this, aside from being a huge credibility builder, goes back to your Member Success Program. If you remember from Member Success, one of the things that we should be doing before every one-to-one -one meeting with another member is to be doing the GAINS Exchange. And that's where, if I'm doing a one-to-one -one with you, I share my GAINS profile with you, and you share your GAINS profile with me. Well, we can do that electronically now simply by looking at the other person's profile. There's also a report for it in the system if you'd like to do it that way or be able to print out a copy to give to another member. But this is a great way to find out more information about the person you're meeting with. It may even lead to different areas of conversation. The final section of your bio is the TOPS profile. And the TOPS profile has the ideal referral, your top product, your top problem solved, favorite BNI story, and ideal referral partner. Now, if you have limited time the first time you're logging in and filling out your profile, I'd highly recommend starting with the TOPS profile. Now, the reason for that is that this is one of the ones that appears on the public sites. So it appears on your regional website as well as on your national website, such as bniamerica.com. So this one has a lot higher visibility than the rest of the internal profiles. Of course, click the Update button if you've made some changes. Again, if you're a director, you can set some specific director level information. And finally, we have the training history. Now, the training history is read-only, so you can't directly make any changes in here yourself. However, you can look at this, make sure that all of your recent trainings are listed there. If any of them do appear to be missing, simply get in touch with your regional admin, your executive director, your director consultant, and they should be able to help you get this updated. So... All right, we are getting to the bottom of the hour. Um, again, once you've set all of these, you should be able to go and check by clicking on the Profile button at the bottom of the screen, and you can see what you look like to other people. All right, we have a couple of quick questions um, from Margaret. She says, how many educational units do we get for this class? Um, after taking this course, what I'd recommend doing is clicking on the Home button. Clicking on Submit CEU Slips, and this should be listed as a BNI webinar, so make sure you give yourself one quantity earned for that, and click Submit. So hopefully that answers your question there, Margaret. And if you'd like to learn more about the online slips, join us for our online slips webinar in a couple of days. All right, Tim, Tim has a question. Where do I find the traffic light report for my chapter? So the reports for your chapter are all listed in the reports section. So let me just switch over to my own region here. So the traffic lights report is located under reports. So if you go along these, this top row here, go to reports, and this is a chapter report. And in the list of reports here, you may need to scroll down a little bit, but you should see the Chapter Traffic Lights Report. Choose the month and year, and click Go. And this should show all of your chapter traffic lights for your region, and the score for your chapter. If that report for some reason is not available, um, just check with your executive director or your director consultant, and they should be able to um, let you know why it is either hidden or not used in your particular region. All right, again, we are at the bottom of the hour. I would 
definitely like to open this up for questions. If anybody has any questions at all about BNI Connect, I'd be happy to answer those now. For anybody that has to leave right away at the bottom of the hour, I just want to say thank you for being here. Um, remind you that this is being recorded. We're going to record all the questions as well. It'll be made available at youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. And again, it will be available on the support site, which is support.bniconnect.com. And it will be listed in the chapter training and documentation under recorded webinars. I'd also would love it if you gave us a like, facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. We do webinar announcements and reminders and tips and tricks and all sorts of things up here as well. And of course, uh, our next webinar, if you found something useful today, please do go back to your chapters and let them know about these webinars. They are free. They're always a half hour. And our very next one is going to be tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the leadership team tools and reports. So um, there's a lot of new presidents and vice presidents and secretary treasurers that have just come into position. And we're going to show you how all those different functions work in BNI Connect. And again, that's tomorrow at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. So please do join us for that. All right, so we have a couple more questions. Let's see, from Dave Olson, he says, is there a way after logging in to BNI Connect to get directly to the list of chapters? I've only been able to do it by leaving BNI Connect and going to the region website. So you are correct. Um, from the list of chapters is not available at a... Um, at a member level in BNI Connect directly through the BNI Connect site. Now, one thing that you'll be interested in is in the next release, uh, there will be a button in BNI Connect that brings you right to your regional website. It's going to be, we're going to be changing this upper right quadrant a little bit, and there'll be a button that says regional website that'll take you right over there, and you'll be able to look at the list of chapters that way. So that's, um, that's one change that's coming uh, towards the end of April. So hopefully that answers your question. Let's see, Darla Buckley says, how do you know how much to report on commission? Uh, for example, for a property and casualty or health insurance. So that's for the thank you for closed business. So when we submit a thank you for closed business, what do you put in for in the referral for the amount of? Generally speaking, um, the the amount that you would put in here is for the gross commissions to your company. So gross commissions or gross sales to your company. Now that's that varies slightly by profession, but let's take for example a, um, a real estate agent. You know, they sell a million dollar home, they are not going to put in a million dollars for closed business. Uh, what they would be putting in Instead is that, you know, usually a real estate agent make, you know, let's say it's 5% or 6% on that million dollar home. That's what the agency would be collecting. That's what they would put in for thank you for closed business. Now, it's the same things. It's similar in the insurance industries. It would be your gross premium to the company. So, you know, if it's a million dollar umbrella coverage, you're not going to put it in as a million dollars in thank you for closed business. You would put that in for the gross premium. Maybe that umbrella coverage costs that client, you know, $2,000 a year. That's what you would put in. Um, you know, you wouldn't put in, well, I made $200 on that policy. Um, no, you would put in the gross amount of commission to your company. Now, there's a guide for this. If you go to the support site, so support.bniconnect.com, and we look at the slips overview. There is a document in here called the BNI Slips Program Overview. And at the end of this document, it has a whole section on thank you for closed business. And it gives a number of uh, different examples for how it's calculated. So hopefully that helps, Darla. All right. That, Darla had the last question so far. Does anybody else have any other questions? I would be happy to answer those. 
All right, Dave says, following up on the amount to enter on thank you for closed business, if the service sold is a continuous ongoing billing, would it make sense to enter the annual revenue value? And Dave, that's completely up to you, um, how you want to how you want to do that. Uh, and it really depends on your style of reporting. The one thing to be sure is that you absolutely want to enter recurring revenue into the system. So, you know, for example, you know, my particular company, we do a lot of support contracts, ma managed services, where we bill on a quarterly basis. Every time I send out bills, I should be putting in thank you for closed business for that amount. Now, whether I do that on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis or even an annual basis, um, that's really up to your style of reporting. But the important thing is, is that you do want to make sure you put that in there. Uh, Margaret says, how about if you do not know how much the customer paid for the business each month? And at that point, I would say take your best educated guess. You know, one thing that I've often heard in in BNI is that you know this this is a this is a good faith uh, reporting. We want to be as accurate as possible, but these aren't tax returns. The IRS will not be coming in and auditing. Thank you for closed business anytime soon. So keeping that in mind. That would be the uh, you know, kind of the theory behind that. So, uh, um, so Margaret says my company does not allow me to know how much customers are shopping for. So again, um, it, I would take it on a case by case basis, and um, you know, not knowing much about your business uh, might be a conversation to have with your uh, director consultant or your executive director. They can give you some some hints on exactly how to do reporting for your particular industry. Uh, Sherry said, just to clarify, gross sales to our company, not the net commission we earn. That is correct. Um, gross, gross receipts to the company. All right, any other comments, questions? Uh, Darla says, seems like there are quite a few websites for BNI. Can we access everything we need? Um, and <laughs> yes, there are quite a few websites. There are a ton of websites for, for BNI. There is, you know, BNIpodcast.com, there's BNI.com, there's Every region has their own website. There's BNIRI.com. There's BNIMass.com. There's uh, you know BNIOhio.com. BNINewJersey.com. So there's a ton of websites out there, and keeping track of them all is is a bit disconcerting at times. Um, we are working you know closely with headquarters to try to come up with a single resource so that it makes it easier to find all of these various pieces of information. Um, but I agree with you. Um, it can be a little bit confusing at times. A lot of the regional websites are starting to put sections on their sites to consolidate them to be able to point you into the right place a little bit easier. All right. Any other questions? Now again, if you found this information today useful, a good referral for me. Please let people know about these upcoming webinars. So their next webinar is tomorrow on leadership team tools and reports. Webinar after that is goal planning for leadership teams. And then we go on to online slips next week. So if you know anybody that could, be, could benefit from this information, whether it's in your chapter or if you're a director in your region, please do let them know about these webinars. I'd love to get all the knowledge out of, out of our heads and into yours. Thanks again, everybody, for being here today. Happy connecting.